today's uh, lesson is children of the promise, more uh, on the study of Abraham. And uh, this is a very uh, fascinating lesson and let's get right into it. Let me grab my clicker. So in your uh, quarterly is a story about a young girl, and this is a story that HMS Richards uh, used to tell in his sermons. Uh, a father and a 10-year-old daughter standing on a beach, and they go out into the uh, ocean to swim, and even though they're both good swimmers, I guess what, what they call those rip currents came and started carrying them both uh, away from the shore and so the father was still close enough to his daughter he couldn't reach her in time but he said just float and I'll find you and uh, before long there were all kinds of uh, resources being marshaled to uh, to uh, find this girl uh, hopefully floating in the ocean uh, he knew that she knew how to do this and uh, eventually they did find her calmly floating on, the, on her back and not at all frightened. And she said the reason she was able to do this is because her dad told her that it was going to be okay and she could do this. And this is a, a very good example of God's uh, relationship with us as his children. He tells us uh, this is... Uh, um, the introduction uh, part of our lesson uh, that uh, uh, the purpose of the covenant is to restore the re broken relationship with God and that God wants us to uh, join us, join him in the everlasting covenant just as he did long ago with Abraham. And uh, this is what our memory verse says. Christ says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So God is is promising that he will be with us no matter what circumstances. Is that correct? Uh, even uh, in something as uh, terrible and potentially life-threatening as happened to this father and child. Now we have uh, just a, a few minutes of video about uh, just a, a little detail about how God has made us and uh, how he's programmed us to uh, be part of his family. When you think about the wonder of life on Earth, it's easy to focus on big, flashy displays of muscle, flesh, and bone that can blow you away with their power and size. Yet there's so much more going on here than what you can see from the grandstands. I'm talking about the hidden array of microscopic machinery that keeps that bull jumping and the cowboys hanging on for dear life. Yep. Molecules and cells are the real stars of this rodeo and of everything else in the living world. Let's take a closer look. A human body contains trillions of individual cells and the largest, on average, are about two one thousandths of an inch wide. After entering a skin cell, we discover that it's filled with molecular machines, crucial to the survival of all life on Earth. The genetic instructions needed to build these remarkable mechanisms are stored here, in the nucleus, the command center of the cell. Inside, we find 46 flexible strands of chromatin, each made of proteins and the macromolecule DNA. Every rung in this molecular ladder is part of the blueprint required to construct and repair the cells, tissues, and organs in a human body. The color of your eyes, the ligaments in your toes, your strong and flexible skeletal system, the magnificent circuitry in your brain. 
every biological detail of who you are is spelled out in the genetic code of your DNA. If we could remove, uncoil, and align end to end each double helix molecule locked within the chromatin fibers of a cell nucleus, we discover more than six linear feet of DNA. Packing that much genetic material into a nucleus that's more than 140,000 times smaller than the head of a pin would be like trying to stuff 24 miles of thread into a single tennis ball. But how is that degree of miniaturization possible in a container so impossibly small? The answer is revealed in a spectacular feat of molecular engineering. First, proteins called histones attach themselves to the long DNA strands. Then, like the line on a fishing reel, every DNA molecule is wound and spooled tightly again and again until it is compacted at least 10,000 times from its fully extended length. These condensed coils ultimately form the chromatin strands that fill most of the nucleus. The biological systems that empower our remarkable physical abilities are truly extraordinary. And as a finale to this brief excursion into the molecular world, let's calculate the amount of DNA that's packaged so efficiently into our bodies. Using conservative estimates, we'll multiply six feet of DNA per cell times three trillion nucleated cells, each with a full supply of genetic code. That's 18 trillion feet or nearly three and a half billion miles of DNA stored and processed in the cells of just one human being. Now a huge number like that requires some context, so think about it this way. Our sun is approximately 93 million miles from Earth. So if we have three billion miles of DNA compressed within our cells, then we each possess enough of the living code to stretch from Earth to the Sun and back again more than 18 times. The engineering necessary to organize and package our DNA is just one of countless biological marvels that make life possible. For every cell in our bodies depends upon an extensive network of complex molecular machines working together in precise harmony. Most of these mechanisms are too small to be studied without the aid of powerful technologies. Yet each bears the clear imprint of purpose, foresight, and a designer of incomparable vision and skill. The implications are obvious. As human beings, we are more than the accidental convergence of time, blind chemistry, and undirected natural processes. Much more. So I think it's just uh, worth reminding us that uh, all of the controversy over evolution and creationism, this all arose uh, back way long before scientists knew anything about any of this. Mm -hmm. They didn't even really know much about cells at uh, the time that Darwin came up with his theory. And the more we find out about the nature that God has created, the more we find out there's a, an amazing amount of design that's involved. And uh, part of that design is programming. That's what DNA is. It's where the programming for our bodies is stored. And I think it's not too much to say that we're actually programmed to seek for God. Amen. 
We're programmed to be originally part of God's family. Mm -hmm. And that's been messed up by the, the problems of sin, uh, but it is, it is an amazing privilege that we have. And um, in our first uh, day's lesson, Sunday's lesson, I think this is maybe just a hair on the loud side. My mic just seems to be ringing just a hair. Mm -hmm. Uh, God tells Abraham that he is going to be his shield of protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, James, why don't you read this for us? Sure. The promise Abraham, um, verse 15 says, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Uh, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your sovereign, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, you have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. So God gives him a promise yes. that he would have children, right. but he can't, he's too old to have children. Right. So a, 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 a very, a, a very a severe a pro, a, Problem. Lauren, read this uh, quote from Sons and Daughters of God. Christ has not a casual interest in us, but an interest stronger than a mother for her child. Our Savior has purchased us by human suffering and sorrow, by insult, reproach, abuse, mockery, mm -hmm. rejection, and death. He's watching over you, trembling child of God, he will make you secure under his protection. Our weakness in human nature will not bar our access to the Heavenly Father, for Christ died to make intercession for us. So it's all part of God's plan, isn't it? Amen. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. the God, God wants to be our shield, he wants to be our protection, and even when things seem totally impossible, mm -hmm. uh, if we trust in God, He's, he's willing and able to uh, take care of, of what he's promised us. I just want to just as you jump in. Go right it reminds ahead. me of the introduction that you, that you gave with regard to that story. The young girl, um, her father told her, just if you get tired, just roll over your back and, and you can paddle on your back and rest. And uh, God also wants us to trust in him. You know, he's seeking that type of relationship that um, if we learn how to trust him, you know, um, he's going to perform. He's going to take care of all of our challenges. It doesn't matter how big the sea we're in. He's going to take care of us. And, and I think it's important, isn't it, for us to remember that the, the way that trust is built. Mm -hmm. She would not have trusted her father, mm -hmm. you know, this man, if he was a stranger. Right, right. But she knew him so well. That's a good point. So yeah. that, that is really the only way we can learn to trust God. We can't learn to trust God by coming and listening to sermons or Sabbath school discussions or whatever. We have to learn to know God ourselves personally. Amen. And all of these things that we have associated with our worship and our church, they're all designed to help That's right. you know, fulfill that need. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This uh, reference to Psalm 91, that God protects us from everything, uh, all the dangers that might happen. Uh, sometimes he doesn't protect us, uh, but there's a reason in those situations. There's something that, uh, some way that we need to develop our, our trust even further in him uh, when he does not uh, protect us. Also protected, protection against temptation mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's something that we can say that God always mm -hmm. protects us from temptation if we ask him yeah. Yeah. it doesn't mean that the temptation won't come it means that we'll be able to stand it yeah that's so. a big one for us I mean because we could even ask him and then won't allow him you know uh, so we we really we can say, I know how to ask you for, for, to help me with this temptation, God, but I don't really want you yeah, to. Yeah. And that's the issue with, you know, Satan coming, telling the lie about sin, you know. Um, I think we read later on the Bible says, the pleasures of sin for a season. Because, it, you know. They're temporary. They're temporary. Because you, you do feel pretty different when you have had a drink 
I don't know if, uh, forgive me, I know many of you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you've ever remember having had a drink, it does make you feel a little euphoric. Euphoric is the word for a while. When you, you know, when you come. So the bottom line is, before you get sick and yeah, start heaving. That's right. and, uh, <laughs> so the thing is, is that you know, sin has its thing, but we've got to learn how to trust God to know that it is a bad thing to consume alcoholic beverages. That's right. Yeah, we've got to learn that. Uh, mm -hmm. If we seek, uh, and I think this is the whole point of this first day's lesson, if mm -hmm. we seek shelter with God as our shield, he protects us from anything that's gonna lead us astray from him. So uh, just something to, uh, a good way to start this, uh, this consideration. Yeah. So God's promise to bless part one. This is Monday's lesson. God promised that all nations of the earth would be blessed through Abraham. Uh, James read 28, Genesis 28, 14. Okay. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west, and to the east, and to the north, to the south. All peoples are on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. So there's that promise, mm. and yet it doesn't seem like it's possible to fulfill the promise. And then later on yeah. in the New Testament, Paul says this in Galatians 3. Lauren, read that one for us. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you all for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So as, as Christians, we are part of Abraham's offspring is what, is what uh, Paul is saying. Isn't right, it? absolutely. And the emphasis is not as much on the physical inheritance mm -hmm. as it is on the relationship with God. The physical nation of Israel, it was not because Israel was something special in uh, physical terms. They were just normal people. But God chose them as his people to be part of his family. Mm -hmm. And then they had a job to do to reveal him to the people around them. But it was the relationship right. that was important, wasn't it? That's right. And it's the same thing uh, with us today. Um, that all families would be blessed by uh, Abraham's offspring and descendants. Uh, the blessing would come through a descendant of Abraham, ultimately through Jesus. And it's just mind-boggling, isn't it? Jesus is not just, a per not just a person, is he? Right. He's not just a prophet. Right. You know, there are a lot of religions that have prophets, but they don't even claim, make a claim to be anything else but a human being. And Jesus was born as a human, but he was God. God wrapped himself up in, in humanity. And, and literally, that DNA that we saw in that video at the beginning, God used that to program the physical body that Jesus lived in and that he will actually keep throughout all eternity. You know, one of the things too that was we talked about in, as we read those verses is that God is not just interested in this one person, Abram, but He's interested in all of humanity. All of humanity. You, know, you see it in in Genesis, and you see it in Galatians. You know, God His interest is is humanity. He you know it's, it's not a self thing. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And I I think this last yeah. point is very important. Whenever we talk about the covenants in the mm -hmm. Bible. It's not so much about us as it is about God, isn't it? Amen. That's right. God has said, I will do this for you mm -hmm. if you will just trust me. Right. Trust involves a lot of different things, doesn't it? Yes, it involves it believing what God says. It involves doing what he says, like the little girl, mm -hmm. just sitting back and, and, and floating uh, and waiting for her father to come and rescue her. That's that corresponds to us keeping God's commandments. We just have to trust God that when he says, you're gonna be better off if you behave this way, mm -hmm. even if it's contrary to our natural wishes sometimes, yeah. we have to trust him that that's really what's gonna be best. Amen. And I'm sure that that trust that she had with her dad was developed through relationship. Through her relationship. That again, yeah. And if, she, if he was a stranger, or if she just, 
saw him once a week for an hour, yeah. she wouldn't have had that relationship. I mean, she may have taken a gamble. Maybe this is my best <laughs> yeah. shot at survival. Yeah. But, yeah. But, she, but, you know, that's not what we're after as, as Christians, is it? We're not just out to get into heaven by the skin of our teeth. No. Christ promises us an abundant life. Amen. And he wants us to have a, a full and happy uh, life that we, you know, that we share with him and with each other. Yeah, now. Now. Yeah, right. Uh, as well as what's to come. Is, yeah. So going on to uh, Tuesday's yeah. lesson, God's promise to save part two. Uh, Jesus is the final and complete fulfillment of God's promise in his covenant with Abraham to rescue us from the depths of sin and rebellion. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, James, read 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 yeah. yeah, this is a good one. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are al still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And verse 18 is always the one that we cannot neglect. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. You know? so, so this is what, as Christians, we have to look forward to, right. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not that we just want to study about a dead prophet or you know, a dead person 2,000 years ago, but we, ha we have the, this wonderful hope of looking mm -hmm. to see God, see Christ personally, see him, as Paul says, face to face. It's kind of like when you're um, a mother going through labor, and at least you know, know that the pain about. is productive. <laughs> right, I'm sure you know what that's like, James. But, I'm, you know, at least you know that what you're going through, it mm. may be difficult, but at least it's productive. Mm. That's right. And just like, you know, here on Earth, we have this relationship. We may need to give up things, but we know that in the end, you know, we'll get to spend eternity with Jesus and that is so that's like the yeah, joy. ultimate <laughs> joy, joy unspeakable joy yeah. uh, Lauren read Revelation 3 12 mm -hmm. the one who is victorious I will make a pillar in the temple of my God never again will they leave it I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God and I will also write on them my new name. Have mercy. Uh, James, read Isaiah 25. Eight. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. Man. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9. Uh, Paul says, it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, and that's from Isaiah again. Mm -hmm. The things God has prepared for those who love him. Yeah. So just a tremendous, uh, uh, a m tremendous amount of uh, things that we have to look forward to as Christians, don't we? As part of our heritage, as part of this, uh, of this chosen nation. Uh, James, read Revelation 22, 1 to 5. Sure. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as, a clear, as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God and the, lamb, uh, and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city on each side of the river stood the tree of life bearing twelve crops of fruit yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations no longer will there be any curse the throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him they will see his face and his name will uh, be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. There will not need, they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. And, the, and this is just a wonderful picture of, yeah. of literally living in the uh, glory mm -hmm of God himself Amen. and we won't really even need the sun right. uh, I, I guess we could say the sun will be dim by comparison yeah. with uh, the actual presence of God I mean it's just 
it's hard to uh, imagine. And I, mm -hmm. another thing I noticed in this text mm -hmm. says, uh, they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. And when, when John talks about someone having a name on their forehead, what does he really mean? Mm -hmm. What's, what's behind your forehead? Your brain. Your brain. <laughs> he means that God himself will be actually imprinted in our, in our thoughts and in our minds. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not going to be something external, something we carry around in a book, right. or that, we, that, we, that we is outside of us. It'll actually become part of the way we think. Mm -hmm. And of course, however we think is how we behave, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, if we try to correct our behavior without correcting the thinking, we're never, never going to accomplish anything. Right. This is pretty exciting stuff, you know. I, you know, I, uh, as we read about this, you know, uh, folk, as we go through life and we, we have challenges and we have uh, perplexities, I mean, this is something that we can really uh, pick up and, and feel better. This right. Is, this yeah. is as, this is good medicine we we're just reading here, yeah. uh, speaking about what God is going to do for us and what he wants to do even now, you know, mm -hmm. talking about imprinting, you know, he wants to start the process now. That's right. And not just... It's, it, it will happen. Yeah. We, we will be changed yes, in a moment. We'll be changed. But the process starts now, doesn't it? It does. And so Christians, so we, we're not as glum and gloomy as other folk because <laughs> we have we've got that blessed hope. We believe, we trust like the little girl. We right. trust that our father's going to come back. That's right. You know, and, so, and if we do that, we can sit on the edge of our seat, can't we, and say, oh, we, Jesus, we, we help me. Some, we have something to really look forward yeah, to. Yeah, and we have something to share. Yeah. to share. We have something to share. We say, I serve a God who's coming back. I serve a Savior that is, wants to save you and deliver you from what you are in now. You know, that's what we're called to do. I think. And, and we just, this just seems so simple. It seems simple, doesn't but it? But we have to keep reminding ourselves mm -hmm. that this is all because of what God has given us. Yeah in the life of Jesus Christ. And we would never understand God, would we? Right. If we didn't have the life of Jesus right. to show us in human terms what God is like. Yeah. Uh, because on Sinai, mm -hmm. uh, they really misunderstood God. They, they were afraid of him. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, we're going to do everything you say mm -hmm. because they were scared. Oh, but yes. it didn't, it didn't stick did it yeah all that the lord says we will do that's right just check a few verses later and and they didn't really do anything that god said did they right, right. uh or they did very little of it right. and it it was because it was it was outside of them it was not something they didn't understand what god was really like and god knew that it was going to take a, a demonstration that no one could miss mm -hmm. To really help us understand what he's like. Right. And that's why Jesus came. And that's why Jesus came. That's why he lived a perfect life. Why he was willing to allow himself to die for yeah. us. It's not because there's something wonderful about death, right. is it? Right. Death is a terrible curse. Enemy. But Jesus, God took the curse upon himself. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that gives us life is because we understand... Mm -hmm. There's no way we can have salvation or eternal life without God, isn't there? That's right. Uh, God in human flesh brought about reconciliation with God through his sinless life, death, and resurrection. And he still, this is not a passive thing right. that happened once and it's done. Mm -hmm. He's still, the wonderful thing about the doctrine of the sanctuary yes. in heaven, uh, as you, there's references here from Hebrews, he is our high priest in heaven. And just like the high priest in the Old Testament directed prayers to God for mm -hmm. the people and interceded with God for the people, they didn't understand what God was like, but the high priest helped them in their relationship with God. Jesus is there to intercede for us, and he is the, the complete and final fulfillment of this promise that God made to Abraham uh, that he would personally come back to this earth to save and rescue all of us. Amen. What a God. So uh, Wednesday's lesson. Abraham was without descendants. He didn't even have a son. And yet God promised him a son and a nation of descendants. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just look at a couple of these verses. 
Uh, because of our uh, messing around at the beginning, we're a little short on time. Genesis 18, uh, God says that Abraham's going to become a great nation. Uh, all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him. And you can see this, I just love this, this painting of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the wonderful mm. promise mm -hmm. uh, for the future mm -hmm. when that child was born. And they were old people, just like in the, in the picture. picture. Yeah. Uh, and God says, I have known him uh, that he will command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. So it's, again, it's a relationship, isn't Amen. it? Amen. God promised him Isaac. Isaac was born in fulfillment of that promise. But God knew that Abraham would uh, follow him and uh, maintain, I guess you could say, his relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with God. Uh, Exodus 19 uh, God says, if you obey me, uh, then out of all nations, you're going to be my treasured possessions. And what does it say that they would be in verse 5, in verse 6? You will be for yeah. me a kingdom, a kingdom of priest, a priest, a priests priest, and, and a, a holy nation. nation. And a priest is someone who is to represent God, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's, that's right. what a priest does. Yeah. And that's what God had in mind for his people. That's what he has in mind for us, is that we'll represent God to other people that don't know anything about God. And, and the world today, uh, there was a terrible quotation in our, one, one of our uh, day's uh, lessons mm -hmm. from, uh, 16th uh, century. from uh, Thomas of Assisi, was it? Something it, or? like that. Oh, it was two. Uh, <laughs> from one of, the, uh, one of the church fathers, uh, about all of the terrible sins in the world. Mm -hmm. And we see all of that today, don't we? Right. Uh, it was, it was, it's really no different than it was back in that time. That's right. uh, it has always been uh, human beings, when we go our own way and do our own thing, uh, un unlike what the song that uh, Frank Sinatra sings I do. <laughs> uh, about doing it his way, when we do it our way, we really totally mess up. Don't That's we? right. And, uh, and God says, if you will just obey me and keep up this covenant relationship with me, uh, I'm going to make you be a representative to everyone else. They're going to understand more about God because of you. And Isaiah uh, 60, 1 to 3, God says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Mm. The glory of the Lord rises upon you. And this does not mean that Israel was going to get some wonderful uh, privileges and, and, and uh, wonderful things happen to them. It says in verse 3, all of this glory and light, nations will come to your light. And kings. And kings, the brightness of your, of your dawn. People are going to see God's glory reflected. That's, you know, we, we read this sometimes and it's wonderful poetry. But we don't really think about what God is saying. He says, I am doing this. I'm, I'm giving you this wonderful privilege mm -hmm. in order that other people can see my glory reflected yeah, in your right. life. And that's why our lives are so important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Our lives are, it's not important for us to keep God's commandments just to obey a list of, of do's and don'ts. It is that when we keep God's commandments, we are reflecting God's character, aren't we? Amen. Amen. So, a wonderful privilege. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Christ's Object Lessons, Ellen White says that the children of Israel were put in the land where they were placed, and the, the land where, where Abraham was sent, you know, when he left his home in Babylon. They were put there because the nations that had rejected God would see the revelation of God's character through Israel. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out that way uh, so much. Although eventually it did, didn't it? Because yeah. Christ came through. God, God just took care of the uh, whole process and kind of held on and, yeah. and gave him a little nudge here and a little nudge there when he, when right. he needed to. And eventually mm -hmm. Christ was born yeah. through this, the descendants of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was still, uh, the plan still worked. 
it would have been wonderful if they had done what they were supposed to, right? <laughs> yes. uh, it right. would have been uh, yeah. if people were ready for uh, Christ when he came instead of it being a surprise to everyone, including God's people. So a great and mighty nation, uh, God has, uh, it is, he is not setting us up uh, and Abraham's descendants up to be great for themselves. It's to be uh, representing uh, Christ. Uh, this little quote here at the, at the last from Christ's Object Lessons, Christ was to be uplifted before the nations and all who would look unto him should live. Amen. And uh, th this one on Thursday and Friday, I just uh, thought this was an interesting idea that he says, why would God say he would make Abraham's name great? Is that really a good idea or is it going to just lead to pride? And, mm -hmm. uh, and this is an example of that. Genesis, when they built the Tower of Babel, mm -hmm. they even used the same term. They said, we're going to build a city, a tower that reaches to heaven so that we may make a name for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Is that what God had in mind? No. 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 Uh, uh, he said, I'm going to bless you and you will be a blessing. There's, there's nothing selfish or building up your own reputation in what God has in mind for his people. He says, you're going to be a blessing to all the nations. Mm -hmm. And I just love this verse. Uh, it was in uh, Thursday's lesson, 1 Corinthians 4.9. Paul paints a picture of some imprisoned people, and he says, we're the ones that are imprisoned at the, at the end of the procession. Mm -hmm. We're condemned to death. We're being led into the arena. Mm -hmm. We have been made a spectacle to the world. Mm -hmm. And not only to the world, what else does he say? Both to angels mm -hmm. and Both to, to men. Both to angels and mm -hmm. to men. So God, we have the privilege of being able to witness to God's grace and his love, yes. not only to human beings, but to all of the unfallen worlds that still have some lingering uh, questions about Satan's lies that he, uh, you know, lies are, we're finding this out in our current political situation, lies sometimes are more powerful mm -hmm. or seem to be more powerful than truth. That's right. It's only after time that, we, that the truth comes out, isn't it? But the truth eventually does come out, doesn't it? Sorry, it does. And, uh, and Satan told lies about God, and only through this long process of the plan of salvation have we uh, actually been able to, uh, uh, to really see the truth. And, and the angels, the, the inhabitants of the unfallen worlds also need this revelation. And uh, at the end of uh, the study guide for Thursday, uh, he says the plan of salvation rests only upon the work of Christ in our behalf. We, as recipients of God's grace, are nevertheless still involved. So Christ, everything is based on Christ and on what God has done for us, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, we have a role to play and the, the, the drama of the ages, the battle between Christ and Satan is still being played out in and through us, everyone in the universe, literally, is watching what is happening in the conflict. And the whole purpose of this arrangement that God has made is that he wants the questions to be answered so completely and so thoroughly that it's never going to happen again. There's not going to be any more doubt. Uh, it will all, all will be made plain by the time Christ comes, uh, the character of God will be revealed. And, uh, and we're part of this. Isn't, isn't that a, you know, just a wonderful privilege? Uh, we're important not because of ourselves. We're important because we have a relationship with God. Amen. 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 Well, our uh, time is up. Uh, when the Lord said to Abraham that he would make his name great, he was not talking about it uh, the way the people did at the Tower of Babel. He would make his name great by revealing himself through Abraham and his descendants and, and by trust in Christ. We're part of that, aren't we? We're Abraham's 
uh, offspring as well. Uh, and the whole world uh, someday will be able to understand the Amen. truth of the great controversy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Good news. So uh, our time is up. Uh, James, uh, we're, we're going to have just, I believe it's one more week on uh, Abraham's descendants. Next week is our lesson, uh, is Abraham's seed. Mm -hmm. uh, James, why don't you have prayer for sure. us as we close. All right, let's go. Father in heaven, we're so thankful for um, the great work of redemption. We pray in a very special way that you will be with us as we continue to worship with you and seek to study your word to know more about your great love for us. We, and and of course our part in the relationship that you desire. Be with us as we continue to worship you this day. Thank you for each one who is here. We pray that we will have had enough a taste of, of the love of Christ, that we will want more of him. Uh, be with us again, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So now we have a 15 minute break and then we'll come back to begin church at about a quarter till.